Welcome to Saturday Shred Show. I'm Chris Grow, and this is the internet's most stoked surfboard show. This is The Underdog by 17-year-old Taz Yassin, who we featured in episode 39. And this is a brand new Quicksilver heat vest going out to Christopher Irwin, so shout out to you. Stock dimensions on this board are 6'2 in length by 19.625 wide by 2.625 thick at the stringer with about 33.16 liters of volume. That puts this board at about a liter and a half more volume than boards like the Tilo or the Fred Rubble, and about a liter and a half less than boards like the Neil Diamond or the new Flyer when compared at similar length. You could almost get away with saying that this board has dimensions roughly comparable to a subdriver, except this board has about a half an inch less width from rail to rail. This board is also a bit more thin at the stringer than a subdriver is. Since I've already measured the rocker in this board, I know that the tail rocker, the curve in the tail rocker angling up like this, comes in at about 2.6 inches. That's about a tenth of an inch more than normal in a board like this, and we'll talk really quick about why that matters. You can estimate your board's total tail rocker by getting a long aluminum straight edge like this and balancing it in the center of your board, which I've already measured off. Then you get any standard 12 inch ruler and put it here, measuring the distance from the bottom of the board to the bottom of the straight edge. And that gives you the total distance of curve that your board makes from center all the way to tip, in this case, 2.6 inches. What gets me really excited is thinking about how when we talk about boards having more or less tail rocker, we're usually only talking about changes of like a 10th to a quarter of an inch in curve, but those small deviations in measurements have an enormous impact on how our boards surf. Generally speaking, the curve of your tail rocker will tell the future about what your turns will look like because if you do a turn on rail with a lot of curve in your tail rocker, your turn will fit the curve of your rail. But if you do a turn on a board with a totally flat tail rocker, that board will get on rail and primarily drive straight and you'll really have to push it into a turn. It's really interesting to note though that if you measure the curve of your tail rocker the way that we just did, it tells you absolutely nothing about where the curve in your tail rocker is happening. For example, imagine one very extreme situation where you could have not much tail rocker through here, but then a very drastic flip up in the back six inches of the board like the DFR we did in episode 19. That tail rocker measurement on that board would get you to the same point in the tail, could get you to the same point in the tail, as a board that had no flip in the last six inches that was very flat, but had a ton of curve in the last two feet of the board. Both of those boards could get to the exact same total measurement at the tail, but they would take different paths to get there. It's commonly thought that if you want to surf really loose with a lot of flip, and with a lot of slide, you might really like boards that have a lot of flip happening somewhere in the back foot of the board. That's because it gives you the opportunity to press down really hard and immediately change from one planing surface to a totally different one, effectively letting you plane like this and then press down and start planing like this. And that lets you get a lot of slide off of a track that you're currently on because you can change from going on this surface here to all of a sudden going on this surface here. But if you want more drive through your turns with less release, you can sometimes get that drivey feeling from a board that has a lot of tail rocker, as long as that tail rocker is a continuous curve in the back two or three feet of the board, not relatively flat to a drastic flip somewhere in the last six to 12 inches. What's really interesting about the tail rocker of this board to me is that it doesn't have any crazy flip in the back, it just has a smooth flowing bend from the center. That makes the high tail rocker measurement we did earlier come from a smooth flow in the last two and a half feet of the board, not a crazy flip in the tail. However, the nose rocker works in the entirely opposite way without much bend coming from here to here, keeping this area relatively flat, and then most of the total nose rocker measurement coming from the flip that happens here in the last six to 12 inches. I think that optimizes this rocker template for someone who wants a little bit easier paddling than a comparable shortboard that might have more bend from here to here. If you were Taylor Knox or Mick Fanning, then you might find yourself wanting more rocker from here to here because of how that added curve would help you bend into your turns like this. Thing is that most surfers just aren't good enough to do those kind of full rail gouges where the entirety of your rail from nose to tail is submerged underwater and we're better off having the benefits of increased paddle power of less nose rocker through here than we are to dial in the bend of this for super high performance turns. Without a flip back here in the tail I think that this kind of a rocker template suits the surfing of someone who doesn't have a hypersensitive feel for extreme rocker like Dane Reynolds because of the way that that this kind of a tail rocker won't slide out at the slightest shift of your weight. Look really closely at the foil and you can see that it's a little bit thicker in the tail and up in the nose
lows than normal. That's usually a sign that a board is going to gain some speed because of the way that added foam increases buoyancy, which increases planing speed. But the downside is that it can take away a little bit of maneuverability and control because of the way that having more foam back here makes it harder to sink and push around the tail for maneuverability. I really like though how Taz increased the overall curve of the tail rocker to add maneuverability to that thickness that could otherwise sacrifice some control. I really think that the underdog is an excellent standard shortboard for someone who doesn't need a hyper low volume whiplash or proton or something like that. Because of the way that this board gives you a little bit more volume while still remaining true to a standard shortboard outline and without getting too far into shorter and wider territory. Having a board like this is incredibly useful to get dialed in even if you're not generally used to surfing shortboards because you will finally have a board to reference when a shaper tells you to order a different board shorter or longer than your standard shortboard. That does it for this episode. If you're testing fins with Fnatic, you might really like this board with the performers. If you want a massive aluminum rod, check your local hardware store. And if you've surfed any of Taz's boards or any similar shapes to the underdog, tell us what you think in the YouTube comments below. We hope the waves are up wherever you are on earth and we will see you next week.